Hey guys, so I've been working on my own game engine for a while now and I mentioned in my previous video that it was inspired by the Handmade Hero project where the guy was coding his own game and engine from scratch without using any of the libraries and I thought I could learn from his work and basically do the same thing but for uh, macOS and in my previous video I showed how I was uh, doing software rendering but today I actually wanted to talk about the memory management and how you could actually do that on the low level beyond what malloc or new operators um, can give you you know how the naive approach these days to memory management in C would be to just use malloc here and there paired by free to deallocate the memory and you would do that on as needed basis right where let's say you need a little bit of memory here you go you do malloc get that memory work with it and then later you need some more memory and yet then you do malloc again and then you do free for that malloc later and so on and so forth and so essentially what it comes down to is that your entire memory management life cycle in the app is just a sequence of mallocs and frees and it's uh, really a mess right and in this situation it's very difficult to keep track of what you allocated and what you deallocated and what you still need and it is of course uh, infamous for its uh, memory leaks problems and all the things but it turns out that there is actually a different approach to memory management where let's say at the start of the application you just allocate a huge chunk of memory let's say maybe two four gigabytes or something like that and then you just never deallocate it ever for the entire lifetime of your application and you just use that allocated chunk of memory to, to store whatever data your application needs throughout this its life cycle and as I learned from Casey the best way to do this type of memory management is to fiddle with process virtual memory and memory pages and stuff like that and I found that especially on macOS this topic is just not being talked about pretty much at all it's very rare uh, that you can find something on the internet about it and so I thought I would share my experience and maybe you guys can learn something from that Let's first do some theory on um, virtual memory. Basically, virtual memory is an abstraction um, of physical memory that is created by operating system for each process that it launches. Virtual memory for every process is unlimited. It starts at zero bytes and at ends at infinity, and it is fragmented into these blocks for example see the one i highlighted here and each block is called a memory page and on for example my m1 64-bit mac os memory page size is 16 kilobytes here i give the example with two processes and you can see how the virtual memory for those is basically identical right and uh, the reason that it works fine is because the virtual memory is private to every process. There are two operations uh, that are being talked about with regards to virtual memory, memory reservation and memory commitment. I show an example of memory commitment here. Basically, whenever you try to write something to the process virtual memory, the operating system creates the mapping between this virtual memory of a process and the actual physical memory and by physical memory i mean the actual hardware component in your uh, computer right and in my case as you can see the i only have 16 gigabytes of physical memory so it's not unlimited unlike the virtual one and let's say for quotes one i write some variable to the virtual memory and then once I did that, the mapping was created in the physical memory and so now that variable I wrote is actually stored on physical memory somewhere. And so let's say now 
for process two at exactly the same location in virtual memory, I write different variable B. And although both A and B sit in the exact same location in their process virtual memory, in physical memory they are going to be of course mapped to different locations as you can see on the screenshot. And to commit memory means to actually create a mapping between virtual memory and physical memory basically store the committed segment of virtual memory in the physical memory that's what it means now let's see what people mean when they talk about reserving memory in a nutshell reserving memory means reserve a contiguous segment of virtual memory for something that's what it means it's not super explanatory but Let's take a look at the example. Imagine that you need to have dynamically sized array to store some elements and you don't know how many elements that array can store so that's why you need the array to be dynamically sized. And the naive solution to this is of course to use something like C++'s vector where it will exponentially increase its capacity as you keep adding more elements to it. And this is of course terribly inefficient because every time it increases its capacity there is a chance that it might need to copy its entire context to a different location in memory to accommodate the increased um, size. The most efficient solution to this dynamically sized array is by using the process virtual memory where let's say you reserve the area in memory absurdly large so that it can fit as many elements in your array as it can possibly have. So for example, in this situation here, I allocated, sorry, reserved 10 gigabytes of virtual memory for my dynamically sized array. And of course, I already know that this array can never hold more elements than 10 gigabytes can contain, right? So that's absolutely safe to allocate. Notice that reserving memory has nothing to do with physical memory. I reserved memory purely in virtual space and physical memory was not affected by this in any way. The core thing to understand about uh, memory reservation is that these 10 gigabytes of memory that I just reserved, they are contiguous. This means that if I do any other memory reservations in the future, they will never be placed in this 10 gigabyte memory span that I previously reserved, right? So that's the entire point of this. And so what that gives me is that every time I add more elements to my array, they will be stored in memory contiguously, one after another, after another, and so on. And that's the whole idea of the array, right? Because this is the contiguous storage of elements. And the only thing I need to do now is that every time I add a new element to the array, I need to commit that memory that holds this element and that will ensure that this element is actually going to get propagated to physical memory and be stored there. As you can see on this diagram, this yellow highlighted area is basically the part of the array that actually populated with elements and that's the only part that's been sto stored in physical memory. I actually really like this example. I think this is really cool, elegant implementation of this dynamically sized array. It's really cool. So let's now see how to implement this dynamically sized array in example in code. As you can see here, I am trying to uh, reserve the 4 gigabytes works of memory for my application to use and I can use that with this mmap um, system call on macOS and the parameters uh, we pass here the first one is the base address in the virtual memory where we should start allocating from then second is the how many bytes we want to allocate then next what are the um, access to this region. In my case, I want to do both read and write. And then next is the flags that say that the shared memory when committed to physical memory should be visible by other processes. 
and this map unknown flag is basically tells that we are allocating memory and not trying to map the some sort of a file to memory because mmap can be used for both um, mapping contents of some file to memory or for just a memory allocation right so in our case we just want to do memory allocation so that's why we do map unknown and then the next thing is the file descriptor to map to memory and again we are not dealing with files so we're just passing minus one and then the last parameter um, I forgot but it's basically always here let's now fire a debugger and um, see what's going on okay so I have breakpoint on this mmap thing now I run through and let's see so what does this game memory now points to and as you can see there is the permanent storage right which is uh, pointer to the memory region I allocated and you see the value here it's uh, some valid positive number it's a memory address in virtual memory right where the memory was reserved so it means everything went well but let's now take a look at how much memory the process is now using so for this we can do we can use this VM map um, tool on macOS but first we need to find out what is the process ID in my case it's this one and when we call that we can see our allocation it's a little bit intense output but that's what we need right so we can see this VM allocate this is what's actually been reserved right in our case we tried to allocate four gigabytes and that's exactly what we got here we can see that another interesting fact is that remember I said that allocated memory doesn't really have anything to do with physical memory at all so if we let's say look at the activity monitor for um, for this process then we can see that it's right now it's only using about 8.8 .8 megabytes of physical memory right and so this four gigabytes of reserved memory they don't show up here with that's that's great so now let's say what we're going to do here um, is to actually ensure that some of this four gigabytes that we just reserved actually get committed to physical memory and so remember how I said that in uh, Mac OS and in Linux I believe as well to commit the reserved memory you need to write to it so in this case I created this um, loop here that will um, write to one gigabyte of the memory that we just reserved basically it's just going to set every byte um, to two so let's go back to our debugger and um, run through this loop and maybe we need to set um, breakpoint after the loop as well all right so let's now go back to the VM map tool and see see what we got and as you can see here now the VM allocate result it was previously four gigabytes now it dropped to three right and VM allocate got increased to one gigabyte and so we can see clearly that VM allocated actually shows committed memory of a process so how much of reserved memory got actually committed to physical memory that's one gigabyte right and we still have three gigabytes reserved so let's now go and take a look at the activity monitor for our process here and as you can see it says one gigabyte here so in fact yes it confirms that we actually 
committed this one gigabyte. So that's it. Hopefully you learned something here. I actually wrote a blog post about this on my Substack. So if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing to me there. Link is going to be in the description below. And by the way, there I also share one of the life hacks with MMAP, which will make debugging this whole huge region of memory much easier compared to just this thing that I just showed. So if you interested in that, please consider subscribing to me there. That will really help the channel. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.